What's catching trainers? Nick Chiller here, and I'm back with more Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet VGC series ranked battles. I say back, but it's actually like my first Pokemon series on YouTube and recording YouTube videos in general, but I've always really been interested in Pokemon competitive battling since like the VGC days back on the 3DS, but I never really wanted to take it seriously until now. So we're gonna pump out some content and kind of really see where the YouTube thing takes us. But uh, anyway, that's enough of that. We can get into the team breakdown. Uh, today, we got a team focused on Ndidi male. I actually don't see the male variant of Ndidi run all that much. I usually see the female. It's typically run with stuff like uh, Follow Me, Helping Hand, and recently it's uh, got Trick Room, which you can get in Terror Raid battles. But uh, the male one, on the other hand, it's more offensive oriented, but it does have some supportive options, but I don't see it all that often. So I kind of wanted to really build a team around it and kind of show everybody what our little butler can do. But uh, anyway, let's get into the team breakdown. Um, its ability uh, is Psychic Surge, obviously is an DD male. Uh, held item, we've got a Colder Berry, Dazzling Gleam, Imprison, Psychic, and Trick Room. Uh, Psychic's pretty self-explanatory. You typically run Psychic under Psychic Surge. That way he gets not only stabbed, but he gets a really hard-hitting Psychic move. Um, Dazzling Gleam is really interesting because we've actually paired it with a Terra-type Fairy, which I actually think is one of the best Terra-types for Ndidi. And the reason why is because not only does Fairy directly give the male resistances against both Bug and Dark, but coupled with Dazzling Gleam, he gets that stab boost for it too, so he can kind of counter his counters with a really fat Dazzling Gleam. Um, in Prison and Trick Room is really interesting because normally the male is really fast compared to the female, so it doesn't usually benefit from Trick Room. But the cool thing about it is, is that you can run it with In Prison and you can stop other Trick Room setters that are kind of trying to get out the Trick Room shenanigans to try to ruin your day. But uh, yeah, really solid build I think we got going on here. Um, next up, we've got Drift Bloom. Uh, Drift Bloom is really cool because it's got an ability called Unburden. And what Unburden does is that if it loses its held item, it gets a speed boost and that speed boost pretty much allows it to pretty much outspeed any pokemon in the meta so you give it something like a the psychic seed and it pairs up with psychic surge he eats that seed and it gives him the double speed boost and he makes a really good support of pokemon the cool thing about it is is that he's he's a really good tailwind setter and since since drift bloom is a ghost type he can't be faked out so you've pretty much got a unfake outable super speedy supporter and the only real way to stop him is with like prankster taunt but there's he's running ghost type terra so if it really comes down to it you have the option to terra type drift bloom into ghost type so that way he doesn't have to worry about it and you're guaranteed to get off a of tailwind um the other abilities are haze uh, shadow ball and will-o-wisp and the haze is being run specifically for running don dozo encounters i think i'm saying that right because there's a lot of the fat whale and the little sushi pokemon on the meta right now so that move is typically run from that but it can benefit other pokemon in this team too which we'll get to in a minute um will-o-wisp is typically run for crippling physical attackers and shadow ball is just general stab that way if somehow it does end up getting taunted it's not complete taunt bait Next up, we got Amarouge. Amarouge is really cool. He kind of reminds me of a... Uh, everybody says that it reminds him of Mega Man, which I think it does too. Uh, he has an ability called Armor Cannon. If he takes a stance and shoots it and it looks like a buster, it's really cool. But uh, he's running Armor Cannon, Energy Ball, Expanding Force, and Wide Guard. Now, Expanding Force is really interesting because back in Sword and Shield, it used to, it used to be available for every Psychic Pokemon. But now, uh, Amarouge is actually the only... Pokemon that can natively learn Expanding Force, so it's really good to have under Psychic Surge. So when you're under Psychic, whenever you're under Psychic Surge, it hits twice. It hits both Pokemon and it hits really hard. So a really good ability to have. Um, he's Terra type Grass as a general defensive measure over how to counter things that he's typically weak versus like Water and Ground and all that stuff. But yeah, he's pretty solid too. Um, held item is Safety Goggles, so he can deal with Pokemon like um, Amoongus that typically want to spore them and flash fire is the standard ability it goes really good with grass terror because it gives them an immunity to something that grass types would be otherwise weak of too next up is taros we went with the paldean water version of taros and the reason why i chose this particular taros for the build is because he he's a really good defensive switch in to the indeedy as well as drift Bloom because he directly resists the things that indeedy is weak against too he's a great defensive switch in sometimes and he can kind of 
help that. It's also really good because he's got a really awesome ability and Intimidate. He's running Life Orb, Close Combat, Earthquake, Protect, and Raging Bull. Raging Bull, Raging Bull, sorry. Raging Bull is really good to run because it breaks screens and the ability is, the ability type is based off of whether or not he's the water type or he's a fire type. So since he's a water type, he gets the water version of Raging Bull. So it's a really solid physical attacker that's just all around great. Oh, and he's Terra type ground. And the cool thing about that is, is that if you Terra stylize him to ground types and you're running things like Earthquake, you can pair him up with Drift Bloom and Drift Bloom actually avoids ground type moves. So he can pretty much just get in there and spam ground moves and he gets away with it completely. So yeah, really cool strategy. Next up, we've got Raichu. And this Raichu actually was the one that Game Freak issued out as a special Pokemon that you can get simply by using the mystery code, Mystery Gift. It's probably not available anymore, but it, he's Raichu's always been a particularly good supporter of Pokemon. He's got things like Fake Out, um, ways to spread status and Nuzzle, Helping Hand to help other special and physical attackers do some big damage, and he's a really good pivoter to reset those fake outs he's running lightning rod and this is why i feel like raichu is really the staple of this team because with lightning rod he can protect our taros over here from electric moves and he can also protect drift bloom from electric type moves he's also really good at being paired with uh, taros here because if he terrestrializes to flying he can also get away with taking no damage from earthquake spam you, in normal situations you i don't feel that there's a real need to terrestrialize him to flying type but it's an option if you need him and then last up we've got tinkaton uh tinkaton's really good it's got some a really solid typing kind of like a mini mega molly from back in the 3ds days but um yeah really solid typing um he's running fake out gigaton hammer you always got to click the hammer the hammer does big damage uh knock off for some form of utility and terra blast uh, Tinkaton's actually water type because it's pretty much just a defensive option in case you don't want to get countered by fire and ground types and the cool thing about this is is that again with Raichu because you're running Raichu with lightning rod Raichu can protect against those lightning attacks so pure water then that means that she only has one weakness in grass but uh yeah I think it's a pretty solid team but we'll go ahead and get into some battles and see how it goes Azumarill and Arbivola. Oh, I already know what he wants to do. He wants to... It looks like he already wants to Aqua Jet to change the terrain. He wants to Aqua Jet in the, his Grass-type Pokemon in order to get off the... Um, what is the... Yeah, the Grassy terrain. But it uh, doesn't really matter because regardless if he changes the terrain or not, we're already going to get that Unburned boost. But let's see what he wants to do. I don't think he's going for like Trick Room or anything like that. So I think I can just pretty much go right out the gate and just hit him with a Psychic. It kind of seems like he wants to set up. Hmm. I don't think there's really anything to stop me. Well, I don't want to lean into that if he wants to get off the uh, psychic terrain, so we're just going to go ahead and hit Azumarill with a psychic. And then, since I can't be faked out or anything, we're going to get off that tailwind with that unburden boost. Because there's nothing that he can do to stop it, so I'm free to just set it up without uh, having that contested. Oh, turn one. Yeah, I love that speed. And then Sebastian gets off his sidekick, which is really good at the start. Big damage. It's not bad without wise glasses. Oh, man. He's a lot frailer than I thought. Man, that's okay. He's done his job. There was no trick room, so I don't have to really worry about that. It looks like they asked me where was life orbs. Not bad. Hmm. Should I bring in the back? We've got... Well, since my own Surge is down, I can't really do anything with Raichu because then I'll get my Fake Out blocked. Oh, you know what? We're just going to bring in Taurus and we're just going to get some big damage in. That and the Intimidate should knock down Azumarill's attack a bit since he's a physical attacker, so we can appreciate that. Oh, I forgot that thing is uh, actually the Arbivola. It's actually part normal, so it does take a lot of damage from that. Okay. That Azumarill hit a lot harder than I thought. Maybe we can pick up the KO by hitting him with a Shadow Ball? Whenever that music picks up, it always sound, it always seems like that they're about to tear us to lies, because that, that beat always starts right before they're doing it. I love that. Oh, 
a shiny one. Okay, not bad. Looks like he predicted the close combat. I think he still takes neutral damage from this. That was pretty good. Now, the cool thing about this is that I still have Tailwind, so I can actually go for another close combat, or I can actually go for... Actually, we're going to go for an Earthquake. Actually, you know what? We're going to Terrestrialize. We're going to hit him with an Earthquake. Drift Bloom should be fine since it's not going to take any damage, and then I'm going to Haze to reset Ferdinand's stats. My man Tauros. I kind of wonder where he'll terrestrialize to. I really hope that he doesn't terrestrialize the galley to go. Well, actually, no, that doesn't matter. I was thinking if he did it to Ghost, but maybe he predicted the close combat, but that might not phase us. Ara Boliva. I think that's how you say that. It's really cool looking Pokemon. I like it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to terrestrialize to ground type. That was a smart play by him to switch like that, because since he did, then that means that the ground type attack is probably not going to hit him as nearly as hard. Yep, and there goes Earthquake. Drift Bloom's immune to it. Some big damage in there. That should have taken out the Gallade. That really scares me whenever that happens. The, the health meter doesn't completely cut down whenever it's in doubles and it always makes me think did he take no damage but he did he took a lot of damage now he's got grassy terrain on the field which is unfortunate because we can't reset that but that's fine he hasn't revealed his terror type yet i'm not really sure what um what terror type he's interested in going for if he's running aqua jet that might end up being a problem but i think how many turns of tailwind do we have left we got one turn left of tailwind Huh. If he Aqua Jets or Liquidation, that could be a problem. So I kind of feel like... Huh. I feel like I want to protect this turn, maybe. I can protect this turn, and then... Um... Huh. Decision-making, decision-making. I'm not sure what this guy wants to do, but... Um... Probably, we'll probably just hit him with a Will-O-Wisp and kind of see what he's going to do. If I can get off a burn, that'll be good, I think. I figured he was going to go for the Aqua Jet. Yeah. And man, Azumarill hits really hard. That's unfortunate. Will-O-Wisp Willow, Willow never lands when I want it to, but it always lands whenever it's an enemy. <laughs> it's a shame I uh, wasted that last turn of Tailwind and I didn't get the burn, but that's fine. He still hasn't revealed his terror type, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap. Um, I think, yeah, we'll get in uh, Jerry. Jerry can take a hit here, and then we'll go ahead and reset the tailwind for Tauros. The cool thing about it is, is that Drift Bloom is still really fast because it hasn't been swapped out, so it's still faster than every other Pokemon on the field. So I think we're doing good, and Raichu, Raichu can take a hit with the Focus Sash. That's okay. That that is perfectly fine. We'll take that. Nice. Not sure if he's a physical attacker or not, but yeah, they hit pretty hard. Looks like it's all up to Taros. That attack side drop is helpful. So if he protects this turn, that's fine. I th yeah, because he's, he's just going to Aqua Jet in the Raichu. So what we can do is that we can fake out the Azumaro. And then we'll close combat into the grass guy. The grassy guy. Got the flinch. Close combat. I hope that one shots him. Yes! I will take that. Nice play. Nice play. 
I feel like he could have got me there, but we came back from that. <laughs> that was, uh, that was actually kind of close. Fight's not over yet. That Focus Sash really comes in clutch. It gives Raichu some really good options to uh, switch in and kind of take a defensive hit. Looks like he was saving for Flareon in the back. Yeah, because it looks like uh, getting hit with that Earthquake is going to be a problem for him. But uh, Fake Out's done, so it means that I don't really have an option because he 100% is going to hit me with Aqua Jet and he's going to take out Raichu. So what we're going to do is, is that we're going to Helping Hand since Raichu's going to go down anyway. And we're going to get out an Earthquake and see if we can pick up the KOs on both of these guys. That's okay. If he Aqua Jets, I don't think that'll be enough to take out Taurus. Maybe it'll be enough. Who knows? Oh, he did an Aqua Jet. Did it take out the Azumarill? Yeah! <laughs> nice. That man, that was a that was a really good game. He almost had me there. He really did. Seems like his win condition was um was the I can't remember the name of that Pokemon, the grass guy, but yeah, that was a really good game. Shoot, that one was close. Good game. Sure. The battle against Jay is about to start. All right, looks like we're getting in our second battle. We've got Dodonzo and Tatsugiri. That's okay, we prepared for this. So what do we got? Doesn't really look like they have any particularly quick Pokemon other than uh, the Murkrow. I kind of, we're gonna leave with Driftbloom, but I kind of feel like that I want to leave Ndidi in the back. I'm not really sure. Huh. Nothing, nothing really seems faster, but there, there could be an issue with Fake Out because I know that Grimmsnarl can carry it and it really depends on what he leads with. Well, Raichu's faster, so Raichu can also lead with a Fake Out of his own. We'll bring Sebastian, our NDD in the back, and what do we want for that last slot? Hmm. Kind of maybe an, might be an Amarouge game. Maybe? Yeah, it's looking like an Amarouge game. We'll bring Amarouge. And then done. Kind of see what he wants to do. He's got two Prankster Pokemon, so he can either leave with Murkrow or he can leave with Grimmsnarl. Kind of interested to see what he's going to do. But if it's Dondozo Tatsugiri, we've got uh, Driftbloom with Haze for that. So we'll see what he wants to do. <laughs> That's a cute picture. Gothitelle and Dondozo. Okay, so it looks like he wants to switch to Tatsugiri in the bag. Shiny Dondozo. Never seen that before. Okay, let's see. Um, Gothitelle. Um, oh, that's a problem. Because if he's running Shadow Tag, it means that you can't switch. That is a problem. Hmm. Well, you can switch if you have... Um, if you've got, yeah, if you use a status switching move, so we should be okay. But it looks like we have to get rid of this guy. But the first turn, we'll just go ahead and do Tailwind. Hmm. I kind of wonder who I should fake out. I don't think Don Dozo really does a whole lot of damage at the start. We'll go ahead and fake out the, the Goblet Tail and see what they want to do. Drift Bloom, I think, is decently fast even without the unburden boost so that's cool that's helpful oh that's perfect that's perfect I'll, i will take that trade okay so we got the tailwind off so we got three turns of tailwind left and haze so shadow ball is also an option or we can no let's try for the burn on dodonzo that might help don dozo can never say that right and then we're gonna vault switch out yeah, I will take that trade, 100%. Unless he protects. If he protects, that's bad. Oh, man! <laughs> I should I should have Volt Switched onto the Gotha Tail. That sucks. <laughs> he got me. He probably knew what I was doing. Oh, that sucks. Blocked it both.
good playing. Raichu's asleep, so that's unfortunate. And no switching out because of uh, Shadow Tag. To be honest, I've never actually seen if it's... Yeah, does will it let me swap out? Okay, yeah, so he does have Shadow Tag. Okay, no swapping out for me. So the only thing I can pretty much do is uh, hope he wakes up. I kind of wonder if I, if he does wake up. Should I go for the Vault Switch or should I go for Nuzzle? Because he, he's obviously going to have Tatsu Gary in the back, but um, I don't know. We'll, we'll still go for a no Vault Switch and see what happens. Okay, swapping out. Then he wants Tatsu Gear. Oh, no Tatsu Gear yet. Shiny Murkrow. That was really unfortunate. He he definitely predicted that uh, switch out. Another yawn. Okay, so he'll probably predict me switching out which is what he wants. But I do need to keep Drift Bloom out regardless because Drift Bloom is basically my win condition condition for his uh, Tatsu Giri shenanigans that he wants to do. Really hoping Raichu wakes up. I really need him to get some damage in and get out. Psychic Surge, so he can't prank or taunt anybody, which is good. Who does he have in the bag? He has to be holding Tatsugiri in the bag. There, cause he hasn't shown him yet. He has to have it in the bag. Oh, a Paris team. That's crazy. So the only way that I can deal with that is if I get uh, Gothitelle out of the field. Oh man, that's so nasty. I don't think I can come back from that. I've never actually played against a Paris team before. So this is kind of interesting. Huh. I never considered that. It might be possible to trick room to reverse the turn order. It is an option. Effective and super effective. Huh. Yeah, that, that is an option. Not sure what to do here. I could either terrestrialize and dazzling gleam him, or I could trick room. But we'll see. We'll see what's happening. And then try to vault switch out if possible, if he wakes up. Because the cool thing is, is that Raichu can still reset their own parish count if I can get that vault switch out. Shoot, now I'm kind of excited because, yeah, I've never fought a parish team before, so this, this should be interesting. Still fast asleep, man. Still not waking up. Maybe you can get rid of the Murkrow at least. Not enough, but decent damage. Oh, good call on the Terra Fairy. Might have did some big damage on that. Come on, my dude. Show your, ta show your Tatsugiri. I know he's trying to go for it. He has to be able to get it in somehow. There he goes. But he doesn't want to swap out because if he does, then the Parish count, I'll be able to switch my Pokemon out and avoid the uh, Parish Trap. Do another Dazzling Gleam. Still trying to get that Vault Switch. The only thing he has to do is um, hit Protect on Tatsu Gear because then it will stop Raichu's Vault Switch. So I'm going to keep targeting the Gothitelle. He predicted my prediction. That is the longest I've seen a Pokemon asleep by far. That's crazy. He still hasn't woken up yet. There he goes. But I can't Volt Switch out. He hasn't terrestrialized yet either, so I'm kind of wondering who he wants to. My guess would probably be something like, um, probably the Dodonzo. Maybe it's like a Terra Steel or something. Big damage. Pierce count of one. Okay, let's see. Does it show you who you have left on your parish counts? No, it actually doesn't. 
but I do need to make a move. What do I want to do? I'm actually going to leave Sebastian in, just in case. And then, because they protected one turn before, I'm going to go ahead and Vault Switch onto the Gothic Tail anyways and get some damage off. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. If he swaps in the Donzo, I can swap in and get uh, Drift Bloom in, and then Drift Bloom can stop that with a Haze. That's perfect. I was waiting for this. I knew he wanted to get that off somehow, so that's perfect. And he can't protect, so the Vault Switch should go off. Man, that, that is an insane ability. But yeah, Vault Switch out, which is awesome, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, that sleep worked out fine. It worked out fine. It was all a part of my strategy. <laughs> and then we're going to bring in Macy. And he can't switch out because I believe Commander prevents uh, Dondozo from switching out. And then I get the speed boost, even without Tailwind, so he's definitely going to go first. Tetsugiri avoided the attack. Try to get off some decent damage. Mm, that just tickled him. Ah, he's got leftovers. And man, these battles are really solid. I'm liking this. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and target Dodonzo. And then Macy, we're going to have you use Haze to stop that whole commander shenanigans. All the, all that buffs, all those stat buffs that you got, they're gone, my dude. Nice. And then hit him hard. Oh, he blocked. Done. I'm, I'm getting too excited. I'm getting too excited. Yeah, that was a really solid strategy. I see what he was trying to do there uh, with the whole Parish thing. That was actually really clever. I'm kind of interested in his team. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit him with a sidekick. How many turns we got left on Tailwinds? We are out of Tailwind turns. Okay. I'm going to... Yeah, we'll boost in Tailwind. Kind of give uh, Indeed him that speed boost so he can hit as quickly as possible. Hmm, that didn't do as much damage as I thought. The interesting thing is, is that he won't be able to switch out, but I can, so it's like he can either predict my switch and attack, or he would have to protect. But, um, yeah, we actually are going to go ahead and switch. I kind of wonder who I should bring in. He should predict this switch, but I'm kind of wondering who I can give up. It's either... Hmm. I don't know. This is a tough one. I guess maybe Raichu. And maybe we can get off a Will-O-Wisp to kind of shore up the damage that he might take. It's an, it's an option. That I don't want to bring in Amaroj as a switch in. I need him to be able to just be there and get off the damage. That never lands. Will I feel like Willow Wiz just never lands for me. Oh, that's perfect. That's fine. He'll probably end up blocking the fake out. Kind of seems like he's just uh, trying to stall out for as, as, as much as possible. He's just trying to stall out. I, yeah, I don't want to paralyze him. I want to really kind of cripple. I kind of want to cripple that attack. We'll go. We'll go for a fake out anyway, just to be safe and uh, try for another burn. I guess we want to kind of cripple his physical attack. Wonder what his terror type was. Oh, it's grass. Oh, this was definitely a Amarosh game. I'm glad. I'm glad I kept him in the back then. He didn't go for the protect. Awesome. Am I gonna get a burn? Oh man, that is that is this three misses in a row with burn. That's just horrible. This is a long game, long game. Man, I can either try to go for. That's not enough damage though. I think I'm I think I'm done trying to burn him. We're just gonna nuzzle him, I guess, and then. Uh, 
just spam shadow ball the burn has the burn is not landing for me oh man this is the this is the longest game yet he's really hanging on there more leftovers the, the interesting thing I think is, is though, I believe since I've taken out more Pokemon than he has, uh, if this goes on long enough, I should still be able to win because I think I've done more total damage than he has to my Pokemon. Yeah, try to get some damage off on there, some form of status since I can't burn him for anything. The burn's just never landing for me. Let's see what he's gonna do. Yawn. Drifloom. Um, Drifloom can be switched out as well. May or may not be worth it. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and Volt Switch. Well, Volt Switch doesn't really do the whole, the whole lot of damage, but uh, it might be worth doing a switch out anyways. And then he can target the slot that I'm doing a switch out in. Interesting thing is, is that if I do a switch out, he loses the unburden boost. Yeah, he'll probably target the slot that I'm switching out in, but uh, I think it's fine. He knows that he knows that the yawn is going to force a switch out, so he can just target that slot again. Who do we want to bring back in on this slot? We want to bring back in... Yeah, we'll bring back in Driftblown. A Yawn on Driftblown? That's cool. Yeah, this is this is definitely going to be one of the slowest games that I've played. At this point, I would just be like, I would, I would be down for a forfeit, but I don't think this dude is going to quit anytime soon. So that's super effective, but that's um, that's only targeting. Um, yeah, that'll never target Tattoo Geary like that. There we go, big damage, and then Shadow Ball should get rid of him. Oh, good play, good play. Yeah, that was that was one of the longest, um, <laughs> one of the longest plays. <laughs> and Macy is asleep. Okay. Gothitelle. So he's probably running a uh, shadow tag still. Yeah, he still has Shadow Tag. We knew that already. Gonna hit you with a Shadow Ball. And then after that, we can get rid of the Tattoo Gear with a Dazzling Gleam. Pretty sure I'm faster than the Tattoo Gear. I know Gothitelle is definitely a lot slower. Kind of wondering if he's if if he's like, man, this battle's going on too long. Maybe I should quit. He's a trooper. Oh well, the Murkrow is gonna go down to to dazzling gleam. Oh, he forgot about the psychic terrain. Probably some big damage. Nice. And down the crow goes. And the only other option he has in the back is Tatsugiri. Yeah, I think we've got this one in the bag. Just gonna keep um, hitting him with some dazzling gleams and pick up the KO on Tatsu. He's just having all the, the bad luck right now. 
Oh, that did some decent damage against Gothic Tail too. Oh man, this this game. Shoot, this is this match is insane. Are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> That's his last Pokemon. He he is not gonna take he is not gonna accept defeat. He is not taking he is not taking his L without a fight. <laughs> he he is really making me work for this. He was just like, well, if you're going to win, you're going to have to work for it. At this point, I wonder if the people chanting in the background are getting <laughs> getting tired of being that hype. Oh, man, this is this is just crazy. Foul playing. Oh, he took that really well. Well, that it wasn't um, it wasn't stabbed. Okay, so either a dazzling gleam if he protects. Okay, <laughs> that that would have been funny. I would have been mad, but it would have been funny. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jay, my man, that that was definitely a match. That was insane. That that took way too long. <laughs> Good game. A battle against Frag is about to start. It's an interesting name. And this will be our last match. So let's see what we've got. We're looking at Umbreon, Azumarill, Iron Hands. Oh yeah, uh, the Paradox Pokemon are allowed in this format since it's not competitive. Uh, Caesar, Annihilate, and Breloom. So those spores are definitely going to be a problem. I'm not really sure if they have any real form of speed control going on here, so I'm kind of not really sure who to lead with. It's kind of looking like... Uh, Kinda wanna watch out for Spore. Yeah, get, getting put to sleep on the first turn would be really problematic. I think, yeah, we'll lead with Ndidi, I think is a good lead. Um, I haven't used Tinkaton at all. I'm really not sure what to, what to lead with here. Yeah, this is, this is a toughie. I actually have no idea. Well, you know what? We'll just go solid with, uh, let's say we'll do the draw. We'll do Macy, Jerry, have Sebastian in the back. And then I guess for the last slots, we'll take Amarish. And we'll see how that goes. Really not sure about those picks because um, this team's kind of weird looking, but who knows? Can get a fake out on the first turn. I actually could have brought Tinkaton, but Tinkaton doesn't have a whole lot of pivot options. The giant hammer and all. <laughs> but, uh, Daft Punk. Alright, let's see what we got. Breloom and Annihilate. Okay, so Annihilate can't be faked out on the first turn. He's ghost type, so there's no way that's working out for you. I, I can't really remember, but I know that, like, Annihilate wants to do, um,. Raged Fist shenanigans or something like that. I don't exactly remember, but uh, I think a, a burn would be really helpful here. And then we will... We're going to fake out the Breloom. So not I think the Breloom is up to Spore shenanigans. Oh, that is a great play. Finally, I get my first burn. <laughs> my first Will-O-Wisp lands. Haven't, haven't had a single Will-O-Wisp land until now. Monkey. Monkey, that is perfect. That is perfect nickname. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that the burn really came in, in handy there. And Breloom's got a flinch. And we got a burn. Burn. Burn and a flinch. Yeah, that worked out really well for us. So since he has a burn... Hmm... I could either go for the Tailwind or... Uh, yeah, we're gonna go for the Tailwind, get Tailwind up, and then... I'm not really sure if Breloom typically carries Protect, or... I'm not sure. We're, we're gonna go ahead and Volt Switch into the Breloom. I don't know if either of them are carry and Protect. Not familiar with their movesets, but that works out. And the cool thing is, is that since Raichu's switching out, we can bring in Ndidi, 
and then the unburdened boost will proc due to psychic surge plus the seed so he's definitely gonna get off that first t that tailwind might be a bad idea but i think with the burn we'll be fine Indeedy Mail's really frail though, so might be kind of questionable if he faints here. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully they don't double target him or anything like that. Ooh. One more hit like that and he's done. Hopefully they don't go to the double target. They did. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> That that's okay. We've planned we've planned for this. Cause now I can bring in Amarage. It's a sh shame we had to sacrifice Ndidi like that, but I think we'll be okay. I think it targets both, uh, yeah, it targets both Pokemon under Psychic Surge, so it doesn't matter who you target, I believe. And with the Expanding Force. Nice. Good damage, good chunk of damage. Yeah, that, that, that burn really helped for this, uh, this matchup. I love when they do that between rounds. It's like they're flexing. Egg. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> That's cute. Umbreon, the reliable partner. Cool. Alright, let's see how many turns we got left of Tailwind. Should be two and three turns of Psychic Terrain. Umbreon is typically defensive, so I think what we want to do is. Well. Still need, we still need to burn Azumarill because Azumarill hits really hard. If I, well, oh no. Yeah, if he went for the Aqua Jet, it wouldn't really work because he's running um, Psychic Surges out on the field. But just to be safe, we're going to Terrestrialize to Grass and we're going to hit Azumarill. If he double, if he double protects, that's fine. But uh, we, we planned for this too. We prepared for this. Yeah, Terrestrialize just to be on the safe side. I'm pretty sure Azumarill's move pool hasn't changed from Sword and Shield all that much. Usually Aqua Jet, Liquidation, um, Play Rough, things like that. Oh, he helping hand Umbreon. That's interesting. A supportive Azumarill? He might have been targeting Amarouge, but it'll be problematic if he kind of hits either one because um, I believe, yeah, they're both weak to Dark types. Oh, nice. The the burn should take him out. Smart play. I see what he was trying to do there. Well, we got rid of the Eggu. Mr. Eggy. Then we should be able to pick up the KO on Umbreon. Ghost isn't very effective. Let's get something else in there. We can, we can swap back into Raichu. Raichu can afford to take a hit. Energy ball. Yeah, um, give me the armor cannon for some solid damage. Because he can still protect and he can still yawn. As we've seen in our last match, it they they've still got a way to take an eternity to pick up the uh, KO. Oh, I love that attack animation. It's like he's charging up a Mega Buster or something. Dark points. That's pretty solid. Tailwind is over. Okay, and uh, no fake out because my psychic surge prevents me from doing that. We can uh, paralyze him though. And we'll just hit him with the expanding force. I oh wait, why did I do that? Oh, I don't wait. Oh, he's terrestrializing. <laughs> okay, okay, totally planned. I totally knew that he was gonna terrestrialize to a different type that would let me hit him. Absolutely. <laughs> this is, yeah, I, I totally knew that. <laughs> Ghost type. That's pretty cool. 
paralyze and then hit him with the expanding force shadow ball that's gonna hurt he would have stayed his psychic type that definitely would have KO'd him I've really I've never seen a offensive Umbreon usually most Umbreons are kind of defensive oriented so it's kind of it's really interesting to see people come up with different types of strategies and Terra Stilization definitely opens up a lot of options I really like that critical hit and then we'll bring back in Mason great thing is is that if somehow he ends up picking up the KO I'll be able to bring Raichu back in to get off another fake out but yeah we got it yeah, yeah very uh very interesting Umbreon build kind of curious as to what he ran we have defeated Frag. we went three and oh uh that went really well for uh, the literally the first VGC video in this series so yeah I think that was a pretty solid run um three and over the first in the series is pretty good the rental code is at the top in the right corner of the screen um I say MVPs were definitely Raichu and Riflo because Raichu's kind of getting in there with the vault switches getting the free fake outs and switching out and definitely Driftbloom I think a lot of people don't really have a real answer to Driftbloom so it's like there's not really a way that they can prepare for it because you can't fake it out um psychic surge is usually there to protect it and it's it's just the fastest thing on the field and nobody has a real answer for it but uh yeah i didn't get a chance to use tinkaton at all i'm kind of upset, upset about that but maybe for the next video we'll try to make like another uh, maybe a team around tinkaton or something like that i think that might be a good idea but uh yeah it was pretty solid um never thought i'd get a chance to say this uh, if you like the content and you'd like to see more uh, consider subscribing below i uh, plan on putting out more videos like this one showcasing more teams probably getting you know maybe some more ideas of somebody shoots me an idea or something maybe i can run new teams based on ideas that i come across but uh yeah that's pretty much it thanks a lot for watching and uh catch you later and stay chilly